Hey y'all, hi. So last week I posted my 2023 end of year declutter series recap video, which is actually called cleaning and organizing my space after an unexpectedly thorough makeup declutter. And I'll link that video in the cards and down below in case you'd like to watch it, especially given the context of this video. What happened was that there were a ton of people commenting on that video, not about the topic of the video. I mean, some people did comment about the topic, but a disproportionate number of the comments were about the makeup look that I had just happened to put on to sit down to film the A role for that video. And specifically, a lot of comments were like, what is it? There's some sort of je ne sais quoi. There's some little something something about the makeup that's making it hit. And what is it? And I'm kind of not sure, but what I'm going to do is recreate the exact makeup, the exact look actually, including what I'm wearing and jewelry and everything from that video so that maybe we can kind of figure out together what it was that was working so well that day. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, I hope you'll subscribe. I make videos generally about aesthetics. I'm kind of a quality over quantity beauty lover. And that comes through in one way or another in pretty much all of the content that I make. Now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. So there are a couple of things going on that are invariably different from the day on which I filmed that video. One is that we updated a couple of our lights in an attempt to brighten the overall picture, make the white balance, like the color of the picture more accurate. And this is our first time filming with a new lights. And whenever we roll out any kind of systems change, it usually takes a couple of videos for us to get it right. So Joe and I did our best setting it up, double checking everything, but we will probably probably tinker with it a little bit after this video and a little bit after the next video. And it'll be a couple of videos of maybe slightly less than ideal lighting before we get to our more ideal than what we had before lighting. So just in general, if you happen to end up flipping back and forth between this video and that one, I don't know, to see how well I recreate the look or something, there's going to be a difference probably in the overall brightness and color. Second, and maybe the biggest impact on potentially my ability or inability to recreate the look is a brows situation. So on the day on which I filmed this other video, I had dyed my brows actually I think that day. I think I had literally done it that morning and then gotten straight down. I mean, I guess come straight down here and filmed. So those were some fresh, freshly dyed eyebrows. It hasn't been that long. I mean, it's been like a week, I guess. So my brow hairs are still that darker than my natural color and kind of ashy color that I prefer. And that's why I dye them. But when I filmed that video, my skin, especially on the inner part of the brow, my skin was also dyed. And there was more definition, a bit more blockiness, but in a good way to the shape of my brows, especially again, coming into the inner part. It's this inner part where there isn't as much hair that's, that fades sooner. And I end up with just slightly more delicate, but still dark and, you know, still the color that I want. Brows. <laughs> Brows that are darker and the color that I want, but a bit more delicate as the dye fades over the course of like the week or two after I die. Here's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, what I was going to say lastly is that also hair I feel like is a little bit unpredictable. I did get a haircut. I think that maybe some people, that was the first time that they'd seen the haircut and so there's like a freshness when you get a haircut. I had washed and styled it myself. I wasn't salon fresh in that video and you know this is me having washed and styled it myself again so it's roughly the same but hair is just unpredictable right? It'll look great one week and then not as great the next week and maybe it was just a particular Really good hair day with this new haircut that I'm still getting to know. But I think the brows are, are like the biggest variable for the overall effect of the look. Actually, before we get into brows though, let's talk about skin because skin was what everybody was commenting on. And I agree. I think I had done something new. I was starting to do something new that I do think had a big effect on the way that my skin looked in that video. And I mentioned it actually in the video. I talked about the fact that when I sat down to my newly decluttered vanity and I looked over my stuff, I reached for different things. I was using products I hadn't used in a while. And the example that I gave was the Natasha Denona Skin Glass. So this is a priming skincare product, right? It's one of those hybrid products. I all this time have thought of it as a primer. It says energizing and hydrating primer serum. I've thought of it as a primer. I've been laying it on thick kind of as a primer. And also it's just so glorious. It makes you want to lay it on thick. I mean, 
It's like this beautiful substance. But for some reason on this day, I decided to try using it more in the spirit of a thing that's the last step in your skincare routine. I think because my skin has been dry because it's the winter. I put it all over my face as I'm doing now, but I like rubbed it in. I really rubbed it in and tried to integrate it with the skincare underneath it rather than putting it on as a layer, sort of like a first layer of makeup, which I feel like is what I've done with this in the past. I'm rubbing it in really thinking about my dry skin and trying to use this product to hydrate my skin because it, it's skincare. It's got a lot of great skincare ingredients in addition to some cosmetic elements. So I remember when I did my makeup that day, I basically finished my skincare routine with skin glass and then I let it sit for a while and like soak in and integrate with my skincare and with my skin. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let it sit while I do my brows. So I have my brow products of choice. I'm really into these two brands, Kimiko and Refi. And right now I've been preferring the Kimiko gel. It's totally clear. It's such strong hold, but it's running low. Like I'm almost out of it. So I, I've been using it and then going back and putting in a little of the Refi just to make sure that every hair is coated with something that will keep it in place because I just don't think there's enough left of this one from Kimiko. But I think that before I do that, before I go in with a refi, I'm going to do something that I didn't do on the day in question, which is to use a brow pencil. The reason I didn't do it on that day was that I had just dyed my brows. So they looked great. Everything was filled in. Everything was shaped and, and the right color and perfect. And all I needed to do was put the hairs in place with a gel. I'm going to try to recreate the slightly more filled in front of my brow brows that I had on that day and just the slightly more, just ever so slightly more carved out shape. I don't usually do this. I usually fill them in maybe with a more of a light hand, but leaving it more natural and leaving the front basically bare. I usually fill in the arches a little bit, but not the front. Today I'm going to try to do it. The reason I don't usually try to do it is that it's easy to mess it up and then have to like literally wipe the pencil out of my brows and start all over again. And I just ain't nobody had time for that. But I'm going to go slowly with delicate strokes. This is the refi pencil, by the way. I actually wish I had the Kamiko one because it's harder. The pencil is hard and so it's easier not to go overboard and I can't find it. So I'm going to go really, really delicate. Gosh, it feels like my skin is so kind of slick from the skin glass that it's not sticking very well to my skin. Let's try that. I'm not super happy with it because the Refi Medium Brown Brow Pencil is warmer than the color of my brow hairs. My brow hairs are currently like a blackish brown, very cool toned brown, and this just isn't a good match. And also, it's not thin enough enough for me to get like brow hair strokes. So I'm basically just drawing, I'm filling in with like coloring, <laughs> like filling in a coloring book, the shape of the brows that I had on that day underneath my brow hairs. So up close, it looks very much like makeup, you know? I'm just not the biggest fan. That This is why I never do this. Yeah, I feel like th this looks a lot more like makeup than it did on that day. I also filled, I just did some general filling in. But I think that the most meaningful difference between what I might, what kind of look I might have gotten if I would just put gel in and maybe a little filling and what I actually did is the front, these bits in the front. And I just want them to be a little softer. All right, I faded them by just tapping and rubbing a little bit. I'm going to sit with that. I'm going to go in with a little bit of the refi, which I hadn't put in yet. I'm going to sit with that and see if it kind of grows on me maybe as I do the rest of my makeup. Maybe it'll st start looking a little less intense. Wow, I really got in the weeds with this brow. It was like I messed with it too much and then it had to be fixed. But the only way to fix it was to mess with it more. I feel like I have gotten as close an approximation to the brows that I had on that day as I could get in any way other than having them freshly dyed. And I reminded myself why I never tried to achieve this look without having my brows freshly dyed. But I also think, well, I also, what I was going to say is I also think that if I had had a different color pencil, a little bit harder and cooler toned brown, I might have been able to do it more easily. I also think I extended the tails of my brows today a little further than they were on that day. They look a little more arched up and down to me today than they were on that day, a little bit straighter, a little bit shorter, but I did my best. Brows are like, the hardest part of makeup. It's like you're making a tiny little painting. If you're doing something like this, you're making a tiny little painting of a geometric shape onto a curved surface, which is your face, and you're trying to replicate it. 
on your face. You're trying to do two of the same, like a mirror image of the exact same geometric shape onto a curved surface. This is like a very challenging task. And you know, people always say that eyebrows are sisters and not twins. I also feel like eyebrows, they're not the same day to day. Like eyebrows are events in time. Each eyebrow, <laughs> <laughs> Each eyebrow is like an event unto itself that can't be replicated. And I just feel like the sooner we all accept that, the better. There's something going on on this side. It's like not as thick underneath. It's a little better. Okay, let's go back to skin. So I've let the skin glass kind of sit and settle in as skincare, as I did on that day. And here's the next thing that I did on that day. I took the L'Oreal Prime Lab Redness Eraser, which is my current only green color corrector, and that's why I used it. I do like it still. I really miss the one from EXA. Um, I need to remember to replace that soon. And I also rubbed it in like skincare, really, really integrating it into the skincare that's already on my face, making it one with the skin, causing it to sink in, making it absolutely invisible on the skin, but using plenty of it to neutralize all of my redness so that I wouldn't have to use as much of the rose ink concealer, which is what I've been using lately. And it's interesting, I've been using those Natasha Denona concealers consistently for months, kind of, and I've been dipping back into the rose ink since my declutter, and it's glowier. It's a dewier concealer, and so maybe that's one of the differences, one of the things that people were noticing in that video. I have the lightest shade, LX010. It's a wonderful grayish desaturated neutral. And after having pushed all of those kind of priming skincare products into my skin with my fingers, I've been going in with this as like the makeup layer with a brush. I've been enjoying using this, the BK Beauty 109. It's like a smaller base brush. I'd kind of forgotten that the rose ink concealer has such a pretty finish. I became devoted to that Natasha Denona concealer because it has such a great on-camera finish, but it's more of a soft, matte, poreless, like diffusing finish, whereas the Rose Ink Concealer, true to its name, is a very flattering, dewy finish. So that's it all over the skin, buffed in, and then just going back in in a few places where I need more coverage and building it up. This, the Rose Ink Concealer, is a very full coverage product, but it spreads out nicely and again has a really pretty dewy finish that's skin-like. And then I'm continuing to use my trusty NARS powder. It has a little bit of coverage. This is the shade Cliff, but I'm just using it as like a finishing powder to mattify a tiny bit in my T-zone. And oh my gosh, this beautiful holiday brush from Refer. It's such a nice powder brush. So a little bit here, a little bit in the marionette lines, sides of the face where I have those scars, a little bit on a finger to add coverage where I have these blemishes. So that's the base from which I am starting. Like the, this is the base from which I started that day. And I do think that the way that I did my skin was contributing to what people were reacting to. I do think that the kind of heavy defined but still slightly natural looking brows, which I did my best to replicate. I think those are two key elements, like the base layer of what was going on that day. But the next layer, the top, the icing on the cake was also pretty fun. And I also got a lot of specific questions about what was on my eyes. And here's what it was. Here is what it was, y'all. Just the topper from Auric Defiance. If you watched my eyeshadow declutter, you know I'm like making an active effort to bond with this product so that it can fully replace Tom Ford Naked Bronze. Not even any eyeshadow primer, nothing. I just went in and tapped this. Here, I'll show it to you. You see how it's got a high shine, but it also has kind of a flakiness? The flakiness makes it ideal for sort of tapping all over, even up to the brows. But then it that high shine quality, if you dig in a little more and then really like swipe it and wipe it on the center of the lid, it builds up for that really wet look shine that a lot of you were responding to in that video. But it's also so effortless. It has that really, really, I didn't tinker with it too much. I didn't try too hard quality, emotional quality. And that's because it's true. I didn't tinker with it too much and I didn't try too hard. It's really, really effective. I'm so pleased with this. This is what I've been wearing on my eyes basically constantly. And I'm so into it. There have been some days lately when I've put on makeup just so I could also do this as part of the makeup look because I I just, it's really pinning something down about like what I'm here for in beauty right now. Look at that shine. So I remember using the Tower 28 mascara that day. I like it. It's got one of these little brushes which gives it a lot of control and allows me to do what I actually wanted to do that day with my lashes and what I'll do right now, which is to just 
grab, my goal was to just grab the upper lashes and the outer quarter, not quarter, but half. So if the entire eye is divided into quadrants, so you have the upper inside half and the upper outside half and the lower inside half and the lower outside half, right? I'm trying to just apply mascara to one quadrant of the eyelashes all around, which is the upper outer corner. And inevitably, the wand ends up grabbing some of the other lashes, but I'm focusing my energies just on that outer quarter. Okay, so I did that just as happened on that day. It's not as though it's only the outer corner of my lashes coated with mascara. The wand is too big. It's hard to be that specific. So the mascara is coming almost all the way across my eye, but there's more built up on the outer corner because that's where I was focusing my energies. And there are lashes in the very inner corner of my eye that didn't get coated because it didn't make it quite across that far. On my lower lashes, some of them got grabbed, but I'm actually going to go so far as to like pinch the mascara off of them. So I do think that it, there's something about this combination of the sheer wash of gloss on the lids, the sheer effortless shine, with mascara only on the top lashes and concentrated on the outer lashes and kind of using the wand to pull them out and up in that sort of sleekening shape. I do think there's something about that combination that contributed to the overall effect that I'm trying to recreate here. And I actually think there must also be something about the combination of that eye look with the bold brow and kind of the bare quality, like the, the eyes end up looking kind of bare. There's something about leaving the lower lashes blank of mascara. There's something about having the lid look be so spare and just about shine. The contrast of the blocky bold brow with the relative lightness and bareness of the eye look, I think could be a key. Let's move on to cheeks because a lot of people were like the glow, the glow, the skin. And I think that what I did on my cheeks also really contributed to it. So Merit Fox, not that much of it. And I did this all with my fingers, I remember. So I'm on the nose. I'm really buffing it in, pushing it in, making it one with the skin. But this was a secret. This is the thing that I did. I was so into skin glass and the way that it had looked on my cheeks when I had just put it on, on my bare skin, that I went back to it and used it as a highlighter and mixed it with the blush. So built up too much, it can be kind of slimy. So it's I'm not using a lot and I'm just kind of tapping it over and trying to bring back some of that quality of skin carry shine that my cheeks had when it was just the skincare. But this time it's mixed a little with the blush, which, you know, the, the color of the blush is being tamped down a little bit by the gold shine that's in this product. And it's leaving behind sort of a, almost like a contoury shadow of color. So that's that glow. And then I think I probably went back that day and dampened the glow a little bit right under the eyes on kind of like the inside curve of the apple of the cheek. I usually do that. Not with product on this brush, just the brush that I used for concealer on my face. Sort of like pushing the shine out a little bit instead of letting it creep all the way into the nose. So there we go. I ended up with some blush, like some sort of, again, contouring color on the cheeks, but using a skincare product for highlighting on top of it really melted it into the skin and made it look and feel like a very skin forward look. And then lastly, and I think that for some of you, it's this last step that really did it in that look. Another product that rose to the top because of the declutter, I almost decluttered it. And then I realized that I was able to actually get more product out of it when I thought it had been empty. This is the Westman Atelier Liquid lip balm in the shade Nana. And the color is just perfect. It's neutral enough. It is basically not pink enough to read pretty neutral on me. Usually this shade in a shade range leans incredibly peach on me and looks like a bright lipstick or incredibly pink, looks like a pink lipstick. Usually peach though. Peach is usually the problem. And this color with this product, they just managed to keep it pretty neutral. It's like it has a drop of gray in it and that's what I need for something like this. And it's a really lovely balance between a skincare product and a makeup product. So that's it for makeup. That's absolutely everything. The styling is also the same. So I'm wearing, in spite of talking a big game in that video about having this jewelry box and being able to pick from all of my earrings, I actually ended up keeping in my ears these little earrings that I got to be my everyday earrings that are always in my ears when I'm not wearing bigger earrings. This sweater 
Where is the quince dupe for the Jenny Kane cropped cashmere cardigan? Quince sent it to me after I talked all about them in my gift guide, I guess it was, and I talked about how they had these dupe sweaters for the Jenny Kane cashmere cocoon cardigans that I had never tried. Let me tell you, it's great. And then my hair, I mean, I think my hair was a little bit more textured on that day, less sort of these big waves and a little bit more of the small waves. But I think that that was day two hair, and this is also day two hair, so go figure. It may just be that styling precisely and getting everything to be just so is a lot easier when I'm not making myself up on camera. If it's just me in front of my vanity and I'm like getting ready to film, I can pay attention to every detail. Communicating at the same time as I'm trying to fix every detail in place is never quite as effective. So that could be, I might have done something on that day, used a little bit of texturizer or something to my hair to give it a little more wave up here, but I don't have anything down here with which to do that. And I think it's fine. I think it's close enough. I will say for those of you who are asking, my hair routine has pretty much stayed the same. I'm using a co-wash from a brand called A Curl Can Dream. I got a sample from Ulta of this co-wash. It's like a shampoo and conditioner in one, so like a creamy product that's more like conditioner than shampoo, but is cleansing. My hair absolutely loves this brand, A Curl Can Dream. <laughs> it's like very memorable name. I guess it's not the brand, it's the line of products, the curly hair line that's made by this brand. But I actually got the Light Hold Gel and the co-wash and that's what I've been using. And then I've been using my diffuser just like every, just like I have with every haircut since I started getting razor cut shags. And that's what this is. So I found someone who could do a really deep kind of hair lightening and freeing razor cut shag, like carving into the shapes of my hair and really releasing it from its weight so that it would have that lift and movement. Almost all with a razor, pretty much all with a razor, but without the bangs right? Because I just need to be able to put my hair up right now. This is how it ended up. And it's exactly what my inspo pictures looked like. I mean, I couldn't be happier with it. There's something about the balance, the balance between wildness and tameness, I think, with this length, with it being a shag without the bangs, with it being diffused and having a lot of movement and, and being rough rather than like brushed smooth. It's really working for me right now. So that's what's going on with the new haircut, the choppy changey, as Joe calls it. I came home, he was like, wow, you got a choppy changey. And you know, did we exactly nail down what it was about that look that made everyone comment on it? I don't know. What do I think it was? I think if we're gonna put it in really broad strokes, I think it was the combination of slightly blocky, bold, dark brows with a relatively light makeup look. So the rest of the face is a little bit on the washed out side. Lids, complexion, lips, everything's just a little bit washed out, a little bit kind of monochromatic and light. I don't mean pale, I mean it's pale because it's me, but I just mean a light touch. Like not that much definition anywhere else in the face so that the br it's very brow forward. but all of the makeup that there is on the rest of the face is very glossy. And I think that it's the combination of all those factors together that really made it something, something that I ended up wanting to come back and recreate. But maybe it's something else. Maybe it's just a lip color or something. Tell me what you think. And I don't know, maybe it didn't end up looking quite the same. I'm looking in the monitor here. It's an approximation of what it looks like on the screen of the camera. I think that the, you can see that my brows are a little warmer close to the center because that's where it's all pencil and then it fades into actual hairs, which are more cool toned. So that looks a little bit weird. I look a little green overall to myself. I think that that might be us trying to figure out the color balance. Looking in the mirror, and looking at the screen where I have pulled up the video, the other video, I think it came pretty close. So hopefully, if you're one of the people who saw that video and commented, you must tell us what you've done, hopefully you've been satisfied. Hopefully you got the information that you were seeking. And if you're not one of those people and you're just watching this video for a little company, hopefully you've also been satisfied. I appreciate you all so much for being here as we ease into the new year. It's a bit of a challenging time for a number of reasons. And it's just been, one foot in front of the other, bird by bird, and reconnecting with you all, just being here with you all is the best. So thank you. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to and you haven't done it yet. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you will be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. I think we got it.